Friedel Kraft's acylation solves a lot of the problems associated with Friedel Kraft's alkylation reactions. And it does this by switching out the alkyl halide electrophile in Friedel Kraft's alkylations with an acyl halide, specifically an acyl chloride. An acyl chloride is a species that contains an acyl group, which is some organic group linked to a carbonyl like this. That acyl group is linked to a chloride. And here I've represented it just as X in case this is some other good leaving group, but 99 times out of 100, X will be a chlorine. That acyl chloride is combined with a Lewis acid catalyst just like we'd use in Friedel Kraft's alkylations, something like AlCl3. And the mechanism of Friedel Kraft's acylation is highly analogous to the mechanism of alkylation. It's just that the active electrophile has a key structural difference that's going to give rise to all of these advantages of Friedel Kraft's acylation over alkylation, as we'll see. So let's get into this, starting with generation of the active electrophile and some words about its structure, because this electrophilic intermediate is highly unique. Importantly, this intermediate does not rearrange. And so the one, two rearrangement issues that occur in Friedel Kraft's alkylation are a non-issue in this reaction. And the group we install is not electron donating, but electron withdrawing. So further reaction of the product is no longer an issue. The first step of generation of the active electrophile is familiar to us from halogenations and Friedel Kraft's alkylations. The chlorine atom coordinates to the electrophilic or Lewis acidic aluminum center and produces a reactive intermediate with X plus or Cl plus and AlCl3 minus. At this point, we've seen that this leaving group can depart to produce a cation in the next step. And that's exactly what happens here with a bit of an extra push because there's a lone pair that's well positioned to promote beta elimination of the leaving group in this case. And so I've written it as D sub N here, but it's worth noting that the oxygen lone pair here can encourage loss of this leaving group. And the resulting cation, if we push from the oxygen using its lone pair like this, has positive charge on the oxygen atom and an alternative resonance form with positive charge on the carbon atom that was linked to the leaving group. This reactive intermediate is a carbocation, yes, but it's a resonance stabilized carbocation. And it's given a special name, the acylium ion, since it's derived from ionization of an acyl group to form a cation. The acylium ion is the active electrophile in Friedel Kraft's acylations, and it gets together with the benzene ring in a manner we're familiar with. One thing to note, and this resonance structure really shows it, is that the carbon in the acylium ion is really the electrophilic atom here. This is really the atom that's going to accept electrons from the benzene ring. That occurs in the first step of this mechanism, and I'm going to use the Lewis structure, the resonance structure rather, with the CO triple bonds just to satisfy the octet rule on every atom, because why not? Electron flow like this looks like that classic A sub E step in uh, electrophilic aromatic substitutions from benzene's perspective. It looks like addition of a nucleophile to the carbonyl carbon from the acylium's perspective, which is interesting, with the CO pi electrons headed up to oxygen. In any event, we get an iridium ion, naturally, with an acyl group linked to the saturated carbon derived from the acylium ion and the typical positive charge. And at this point, just like in halogenation and Friedel Kraft's alkylation, the AlCl4 minus anion can deprotonate this species to give us an acyl substituted benzene or acyl substituted aromatic ring. So here's our acyl group. H plus has been lost from that carbon, it's now part of HX, and the AlCl3 is regenerated. So we've made a product now that is less electron rich than benzene, that's nice, it's gonna stop right here, and we can do further chemistry with this, and this is where the Friedel Kraft's acylation reaction really becomes a powerful synthetic tool. Friedel Kraft's acylation is especially powerful for the synthesis of primary alkyl benzenes with a CH2 group linked directly to the aromatic ring. One reason they're so powerful is trying to do this with Friedel Kraft's alkylation directly does not work. So for example, if you tried to take this primary alkyl halide and treat it with benzene and AlCl3, you'd get some amount of the primary product, but a large amount of rearranged secondary and tertiary products if rearrangement is possible 
in this R group. So generally using primary alkyl halides like this is not a good approach to synthesizing primary alkyl benzenes. What we can do instead is synthesize the acyl benzene using Friedel Crafts acylation of benzene and then convert the carbonyl group to a CH2. So key to this method and key to this synthetic approach is finding reaction conditions that convert the carbonyl group to a CH2 group. And we're going to look at two reactions in this video that accomplish this under basic and acidic conditions. And these two complementary conditions are helpful because under basic conditions we can avoid hitting groups that are sensitive to acid and under acidic conditions we avoid hitting groups that are sensitive to base, right? And, and so we can achieve selective reaction of the carbonyl group without any side reactions involving other functional groups by choosing the right reaction in the right circumstances. And this is a reduction process because CO bonds, bonds between carbon to an electronegative O atom that's hogging the electrons, are replaced with CH bonds where carbon is the more electronegative partner. So electron density increases at carbon and this is a reduction reaction. The Wolf-Kishner reduction is the reaction under basic conditions, and it uses hydrazine, H2N and H2, or N2H4, potassium hydroxide, and heat. And keep in mind that the delta symbol here represents heat. And we'll, we won't dig into the mechanism in too much detail for now. Just take my word for it and recognize the utility that these conditions will replace the carbonyl group with a CH2 group. Under acidic conditions, we can use the Clemenson reduction, and this makes use of a metal, specifically zinc-mercury amalgam, which is a kind of mix of zinc and mercury, together with hydrochloric acid. So zinc and mercury are sort of the active reducing agents, supplying the electrons, and HCl provides protons that serve as the H's that ultimately end up here. Right? Those H's ultimately come from HCl. So, we may want to use one reaction or the other, depending on the other functional groups in the molecule. We'll touch on that more when we talk about multi-step synthesis later in the course, but I wanted to present this highly useful synthetic approach for synthesizing primary alkyl benzenes. Now, we do not want to try to use friedel alkylation for that. A better approach is to use friedel acylation followed by reduction.